It's been five years since we last got an album from Travis Scott and I was starting to think that we weren't gonna get another album anytime soon. I started to lose hope. Thankfully the rollout for his next album, Utopia, started up. And the rollout was actually wild. Not only did we get the album along with the rollout, we also got the visually appealing movie Circus Maximus which shares a name with track 12 on the album. Another thing about the rollout, he was set to perform this album at the pyramids. That's right, he was gonna perform in Egypt, but right before he could, a message was put out saying they couldn't construct the concert in the desert. The worst part is that a fan sold his house in the hopes that he would get to see Travis Scott perform near the pyramids. Unfortunately he does not have a house, plus he didn't even perform. So this is proof that Travis fans are actually insane. I think it is important to address the situation that happened two years ago involving the Astro World Festival where 10 people lost their lives. Even though Travis makes great music I still don't think he's a great person. If anything, he should have been more aware about the people in the crowd. Maybe then those innocent lives wouldn't have been lost. Regardless of what you think about that situation, it's time for me to share my thoughts. So was Utopia worth the wait? Let's find out. The album kicks off full of energy. The instrumental itself has this life built into it that keeps you engaged throughout your listen on the song. Travis here is also flowing like he did on older projects like Owl Pharaoh with his raw rapping, not backed by any autotune. Me personally, I like Travis flowing like this. It proves that he's not only good with melodies but that he's also good at rapping. So overall a good opening to the album and a good way to tie us into Travis Scott's newest universe in which he has created. One thing people may have not picked up on first listen is the intro and the outro. The intro is a sample of the second verse on Proclamation by the progressive rock band Gentle Giant. Interesting choice of a sample. The outro is a sample of Funky Dulux's Maggot Brain, released in 1971. The outro itself is done by George Clinton who was also into Pimp a Butterfly, being featured on its first track named Wesley's Theory, so that fact alone makes me like it even more. Moving on. Thank God is a song where Travis Scott raps about things he's thankful for and reflecting on the last release before Utopia, saying that it had a lot of slaps on it and also that it lost against Cardi B at the awards show. Ever since then he hasn't been the since and wanted to make an album that would definitely win something. But Travis isn't the only one in which this happened too. A similar case happened at the 2014 Grammys when Macklemore won against Kendrick Lamar. But back to the song at hand. KC, a rapper and singer straight out of Kenya, handles the vocals pretty well and makes his harmonizing stand out amongst the dark and eerie vibe the beat has. Overall I like this song and definitely will revisit it a bunch. So fun fact about Modern Jam. The instrumental is the original instrumental for On Sight by Kanye West which is where Travis starts to show his Kanye influence. Or rather he wears it on his sleeve. Anyways it's bombastic, produced by one half of Daft Punk and features the Tizo Touchdown. For those who don't know, Tizo Touchdown is one of my favorite artists right now. He has a very unique range when it comes to his music. And considering that he was also on Yachty's album this year I'm glad that he got on Utopia as well. He deserves it. Definitely. Although I do think it's funny that people thought this was an Andre 3000 feature. Regardless of that though it's a bop. My Eyes is a very beautiful song which features Sampha. And his features always add a nice touch to the song and makes it even better. On here we hear a vocal style from Travis which sounds very similar to Frank Ocean, especially with the high notes he's hitting. It reminds me of Nike's, a song where Frank uses a similar vocal effect. The song then goes through a beat switch which sees Travis rapping very energetically and keeps up with the quality of the song. Overall one of my favorites from the album. Here comes another interesting fact you probably didn't know. God's Country was originally a Donda song. Yes, the Donda by Kanye West. It was supposed to be on that album. However, it turned into a Travis Scott song. The instrumental is pretty creepy with the children in the background. However, it does work for Travis as he effectively flows on it, despite how odd the beat might be on first listen. 
You know that one album cover for Utopia everyone called Trash, the one where the black kid was sitting in the car? This song matches the energy that cover was going with and might have worked better if they went with that cover. There were other covers that obviously ripped off ASAP Rocky. Fortunately none of them were even considered for an album like this. Is an interesting thought though. At first listen, Sirens is a song that really caught my attention. It's bold and sounds like you're in a jungle safari. If anything this would go crazy at concerts. The energy enough is all you need to make the crowd go crazy. Now I see the vision for performing this at the pyramids, even though it unfortunately did not happen. Also in one part of the song Travis sounded like Mario from Super Mario 64. And another interesting thing that happened on this track was hearing Drake on the end of it meaning that the next song after Sirens would be a banger. And what did I say? Meltdown is a banger. This is the most aggressive that we have ever heard Drake and I like this energy from him. Less singing and more of this Drake. For all the dogs needs to be a banger. Anyways his verse also has a few disses hidden in it, the most obvious one being directed towards Pharrell Williams. What people don't know is that there's a diss directed towards Kodak Black on his feature which involves Wasgang's rivalry towards Kodak Black. The group has Pressa in it who if you didn't know opened a show for Drake. Anyways Kodak Black got shot in this beef two years back and we almost lost him. The beef further escalated on Paris Fashion Week. Drake did not attend because of the Vogue situation. So interesting that Drake chose to diss Kodak out of all people on this album. Anyways the other thing people are talking about when it comes to this song other than the Drake feature is Travis Scott killing the other half of the track as well. The beat switch also goes fucking hard and reminded me of Sicko Mode Part 2. This song is further proof that it's always a special occasion when Drake and Travis link up. In a way Fiend is a less aggressive rage song. It has similar synths to whole lot of red but the same exact drum pattern as Good Morning where once again Travis Scott's Kanye influence really shows. It's meant for concerts with the purpose of it getting the crowd lit. And that's basically it. The Cardi feature was interesting. I did not expect him to use a deeper voice register but it's an interesting change in sound. I thought it was Rilo Rodriguez on the first listen but boy was I wrong. Sheck West was also supposed to have a verse on this song but it couldn't get cleared in time. That's unfortunate. Song still slaps though. Considering how much I liked Renaissance when it released, I really wanted to like Del Resto. However I was disappointed. The song isn't horrible but it's just okay. Travis Scott has a very boring approach to this vocally and sounds like he doesn't want to be on the song. The props I will give him though is trying to make a good song with Beyonce. Well you tried and failed, that's your lesson. If anything I wanna see Travis less on these dance inspired songs because if Guidance taught you anything it's that songs like that suck from Travis. They may suck less as Drake's songs but that's not setting the bar high. Whatever. On to the next song. I know is a chill and melancholy song talking about Travis Scott's drug addiction and substance abuse, the substance in which is alcohol and how he wants to get off those things and be a cleaner man. As someone who quit smoking when 2020 came around you should go through with it. This way people don't judge you for being on drugs. Plus it's not a healthy lifestyle and maybe you'll be a better man if you quit taking drugs. I'm all about getting sober. If anything it's the best thing I've ever done. So not that I'm pressuring you or anything but you should consider quitting while you can. Also I love this instrumental coming from Travis. The sound of Topia Twins takes us back to Astro World with the energetic energy that is similar to that of Carousel. Plus it features XXL freshman Rob49 who while he may have had a bad XXL freestyle he won me over with his performance. This made me question how long I was sleeping on Rob's music. A long time apparently. See I noticed him featured on Mansion Music by Trippy Red and Almost Healed by Lil Durk but I never listened to his solo music. I might consider doing so though 21 Savage also kills it like usual. So does Travis who closes out the song with a fantastic verse. It's an overall banger that hits every time it plays. Circus Maximus shares the name of that Travis Scott movie I was talking about earlier. 
and guessing on the training montage of the movie has I bet it has this song playing during that scene. This is a song clearly designed to get you pumped. If anything this is going on my gym playlist because I can burn serious calories by listening to this. It helps having this in the background while I do my bench presses. Now I know what you're saying. But Tobias, it's clearly a black skinhead ripoff. You reviewed Yeezus two years ago so you should easily make that connection. And while that is true it's different enough to make me like the song. Unlike UZCS which is clearly a Chopsu ripoff and doesn't even try to mask it either. That song also sucks by the way. Expect a pink tape review soon. Besides it being a black skinhead ripoff though it contains nice vocals for Mabel. Plus Sway Lee does a good job on the intro despite me having mixed feelings towards Rem4 Life even though that was for different reasons totally unrelated to this video. Let's just move on. I've been hearing that Paracel is one of those songs on the album that is atmospheric and is supposed to make you float, but unfortunately I did not feel what it was going for because of how it was executed. The song starts off with a comedian who used to be cancelled, that's right, it's Dave Chappelle, and while his part is nice that's the only nice part of it, I don't care at all for the rest of the song. Young Lean's feature was not that exciting and his vocal mix was rough, it's like a somber song but too somber. Makes me feel like I'll fall asleep any minute. Travis doesn't do much either on this song. It's, in my opinion, a skip. I was a bit worried about Schizo at first considering it was 6 minutes long and featured Young Thug. But all those worries went away when I pressed play. It was pretty solid. I was thinking how Young Thug would occupy the 6 minute mark. At first I thought his verse was very long. Then I thought it had multiple beat switches, and I was right. The first beat was cowbell oriented. A cowbell is nowhere near my least favorite instrument but it wasn't my favorite either. It automatically makes the first beat the worst though. The second beat is reversed and I liked that one more. The third beat reminded me of the beat switch on stargazing and I remembered how crazy Travis went on that. My personal favorite beat though, the fourth beat. If it was just that beat then this song would be higher up on my favorites list. It's smooth and complements Travis well. Plus it reflects how good of a lyricist Travis is even though he mentioned a hitting the gritty on I. Regardless though I like the song but I liked Maria I'm Drunk better. This song was originally previewed at the Cactus Jack for Dior Summer 2022 show that was streamed live on June 25th, 2021. Now there are some noticeable differences when it comes to this song. For starters the intro has been shortened so that there's less of James Blake on the song. Not sure how I feel about that. Another difference is the beat switch on West Side Gun's verse which, by the way, is fantastic. If anything this is close to being one of my favorites on Utopia. I like this lyrical sound from Travis and I think Gun contributes nicely to it. It's very reminiscent of Owl Pharaoh where he had a more raw sound with less auto-tune. And I like that sound. Overall a nice track and I'm glad it made Utopia. That was not a typo. Kid Cudi's new music is mid. Deal with it. Anyways this beat reminded me of the days before Rodeo era of Travis Scott with how wild the sound was. Also when hearing the instrumental I thought it fit Kid Cudi perfectly considering that these are usually his style of beats that he raps on. Not to mention that he's one of Travis Scott's biggest inspirations besides Kanye which you see a lot of on this album. And when getting a feature from your idol it's an important moment for any artist. Hell, it benefited Trippy Red when he got the Lil Wayne feature on a love letter to you 5 considering he's Trippy's favorite rapper. And I see the influence there too. Neon Shark was definitely inspired by Rebirth. And despite how bad that album was it inspired other rappers to try out rock music. And it worked. This isn't the first time he hit up Cuddy though. He got a Cuddy feature back in 2020 for a Fortnite song. How crazy is that? He also featured him on 2016's Through the Late Night. On the second half of the song you can hear the part Uzi sampled on prices. I just think it's crazy that he got yet another Cuddy feature in 2023. He's the gift that keeps on giving, I suppose. K-pop is the most predictable and safe song on the album. I would call it the worst song on the album but unfortunately Paracel exists. It sounds like it was designed to be a radio hit. 
and considering that it has two of the biggest artists of all time it is actually a radio hit. Travis doesn't do much for the song, Bad Bunny saves it which I respect him for. I do admit though that I need to listen to more Latin music and expand my horizon. And while I do usually like The Weeknd his feature was weak as fuck, it did absolutely nothing. Not to mention that it doesn't fit on the album whatsoever. It is completely out of place and doesn't match the dark sound the rest of the album has, making it an outcast. If anything, Utopia would have been better without this song. It's hard to pick the best song on this album. I'm currently stuck between this song and Lost Forever. I might go this song though because it contains a great future feature in which Travis handles extremely well and sets forward the levitation feel of the song. I'm definitely feeling it more than Parasail, that's for sure. And in case the song couldn't get any better SZA comes along with her beautiful voice. And not gonna lie I almost creamed my pants when I heard her. Pause. Anyways you know what's really interesting? This was also supposed to be on Donda and was originally named Future Sounds. Except that version had Juice World, Can I and Travis on the song instead. And while it may be interesting to see what would have happened if that version dropped, I'm glad we got this version instead. This may be a hot take but this is the best album outro Travis has ever made. What more can I say? Metro Boomin laid the foundation for James Blake to do his thing while 21 Savage gave us a very personal verse. Travis Scott also sounds amazing on this and closes out the album well. If anything this has me excited for the new James Blake album coming out September 8th. And hopefully it's good because he sounded great on this song. And there you go. That's Utopia for you. Moving on to my overall thoughts. I like Utopia as an album. Sure, it may not be better than Astro World, but it has its moments. If anything, I don't think anyone could have predicted what this album would sound like. But either way, it was genuinely a surprise. We heard a lot of fresh new sounds on this project. Some I don't think Travis has ever done before. And we all knew that this would sound different because every Travis album does. Would I revisit the album though? For a few select songs. Not the whole thing though. Favorite songs were Hyena, Lost Forever, Telekinesis, Till Further Notice and Circus Maximus despite it being a black skinhead ripoff. Least favorite songs were K-Pop, Paracel and Del Resto. But what did you think of the album? Let me know in the comments section below. Also sorry that I haven't been more active on my channel. I just waited until music started getting interesting again. And I didn't want to talk about music nobody cared about. I waited for a big opportunity. And this was the big opportunity I got to talk about. So thanks for being patient. I will upload more to make up for my absence. Until I upload again, peace out.